1014 AD, Northumbria region, York. Day of the Imperial Council. The most important ingredient for a successful Imperial Council. Episode 23, Miscalculation. It's a defining moment. I didn't realize just how badly you got messed up in that duel. It's not great timing considering the, the danger they're facing. Everyone knows something's going on. At this point, it's just like common knowledge. They did such a good job spinning that. Damn, that's like such high praise for Ragnar. The politics of this are super complex, but in the absence of knowing who to root for, I think a, a solid rule of thumb is just don't bet against Thorkel. Asclad's legend also is spreading. People will know his name. <laughs> Thorkel has his priorities straight. Food and wine. You can just feel the tension in the air, though. He's in a ditch somewhere. Plus, we have Thorkel. Thorkel can remove your soul from your body with a glance. And wine. It's really quiet for a imperial party. This has some red wedding vibes. I mean, Aslad and his wife did him such a huge fa favor. It's weird to call it a favor, but I mean, he needs to snap out of this. He needs to have that that crash and then rebuild. But in this state, he's sort of a danger to himself. He's just desperate. Never bump into anyone in anime. It's a death sentence for the people who you bump into. <laughs> no. When will anime extras learn? <laughs> Never. Thorfinn's having a great day. One win after another. The guy never misses. I'm really curious what his plans are, what he has in store. He's talking to an audience that fully believes the rumors. This feels like so much theater. Interesting, that's what they predicted. They predicted he was going to try to give him like a, a token gift to get him out of there. I expected a little bit more. The crown wants what it wants. <laughs> Damn! Look at Aslan moving up in the world. Yeah, he's just sort of going along with it. Or is he? Yeah, I feel like subtly you can tell Floki is kind of questioning his place. In Athlet, we trust. Oh, is he going to try to take out Asclad? What, what does he have? Ruining. Yeah, he's not going to let this whole thing go unpunished. But what's his angle? Where's. <gasps> <laughs> no! Ooh. Poker face, gone. It's so amazing to watch that happen with Asclad, you know, someone who's so... Well, I mean, a big part of his strength, and also I think part of his darkness, is his ability to put basically anything aside in pursuit of a larger vision. I think at times in this series, I've been a little bit too harsh on Asclad in the sense that I, I wasn't picking up on some of the more subtle signs that he he does care. In hindsight, those are there. I mean, one thing that was clear to me at least was that he doesn't crave unnecessary violence. He's not in it for the sake of bloodshed, right? He let his traitors go. Him fighting Bjorn was a mercy killing, right? But nevertheless, there are things like the, the slaughter of the village that they came across during their, their march. So it's so intriguing and amazing to see him come against something that he actually treasures. What does Asclad do when he actually feels threatened, you know, when he has something he, he really cares about? But I, I definitely wouldn't count him out. 
The king read him pretty well. Why? What does it even live for? I'll bet it's uh, Leaf. This is the perfect moment for Leaf to show up. Just to show him that there's something else. The things he's been, you know, pushing away, rejecting, running away from for years, for most of his life. But I'm not sure even Leaf knows what, what is in store for him or how, how deep it goes. But he definitely seems willing to try. I think Leaf just has to see through this and he can't take any of it personally. Jeez. That's such a long time. <laughs> That's such a crazy long time. ブラッタリーの沖で流氷に閉じ込められた話はしたな。食べ物はなくなり、船も潰れた。仲間6人はみんな死んだ。A point of absolute despair and desperation and hopelessness.どれほど凄んだ海であろうと。どれほど凍えた海だろうと。That's <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. Umi to Tatagat Torunda. Says to Nagioni. Moreno, Pokorio Kaketena. Look how much life this, this brings. I'm just telling the story. This is a set your heart ablaze moment. Pokorini Kakete Chikata. Omae no Tameni Yunjanai. Wasino Tameda. Do at Temo Omaeo. <laughs> Damn, this is just so beautiful. Set your heart ablaze against the sea. That was a way better response than I ever anticipated. That was incredibly moving. And I think part of what makes it so special is that it avoided a pitfall that I was afraid of, where it would be sort of a, a pleading or a begging for Thorfinn. Because obviously, Leaf has a lot of guilt and has a lot wrapped up in his relationship with Thorfinn and his hopes for what happens with Thorfinn. But something about the way he did it, subtly it feels more like him taking responsibility and being a source of strength rather than it being a, a request or a demand for Thorfinn to do something he's not ready to do, you know? It's more like, I'm gonna be the backbone. Immediately it goes from like, somebody who's following him around to somebody he can count on and rely on and put his faith in while he's in this broken state. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's so effective. I needed that speech about man is fighting against the sea. I'm right now in a place where things are sort of weird and a lot of big changes have happened in the last couple weeks. There's been a lot of turmoil. You know, I feel like in a sense, I've maybe lost my, my, my guiding star. And in a weird way, this kind of provided me an answer. It's not a new thought at all. I, I guess just sometimes the, the great lessons are things that need to be relearned or, you know, you need reminders from time to time. But in the absence of a, a clear purpose, I think there is some a real strength in finding purpose in rising to the challenge of the moment. He speaks about honor, you know, living honorably despite challenge or despite not knowing exactly what the, the proper course is or the correct course is, not giving up and being able to, to weather the storm and you know, doing it with your, your head up, struggling nobly. It's kind of funny. I mean, just hearing that, I'm like, oh yeah, of course. Of course that's right. Of course the, the answer is to battle the sea. Of course life is difficult. Of course there are moments where you're, you're stranded on ice with no land in sight. But I think there's some real beauty and heroism to getting up and putting one foot in front of the other and meeting the challenge day in and day out, going plus ultra. Leaf being a really great example of a true warrior in a very fitting way for the show. Yeah, he let, he let it slip. Yeah, yeah. Very insightful. I'm gl I'm actually kind of thrilled that the king had something up his sleeve. I'm glad. It would be disappointing if he was just owned, you know? He's not in, in the position he's in for no reason. He's almost elated. It seems like it was a test, it was a probe. He had a feeling. This is so exciting. Aslan had a moment of like pain, but then he just went into active mode. He'll pull something out. He's alive right now. His brain, they just show his brain on fire. Set your brain ablaze. It's just rippling with electricity. Just one man against the sea. Vinland. It still exists. This is hope. All hope is not lost. This field. The opening shot of the show, I think. And its namesake. Damn, 
That's the big looming question. Will any of them make it to, to Finland? The best way to honor Thor's legacy would be to live a, a great life as a great man. Damn, Leaf. <laughs> Leaf's crushing it. I love it. That's what I needed. I mean, what Thorfinn needed. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Signs of hope. How much do you know, Thorko? How much does Thorko know? Oh. Yeah, Thorko's not, not dumb, right? Like, he's kind of goofy, but he's sharp in his own way. They could definitely use an Artorias right about now. You know what would be so amazing that such just occurred to me? This would be such a twist and just would be so satisfying. I think I gave up on Asklad. I think Asklad gave up on Asklad, right? He's saying he's not the, not the hero. What if he became Artorias? Terrible past aside, ruthlessness aside. What if he actually became a hero for his people? In a righteous and honorable way. I, I can't think of anything cooler than that for his character. To go from this to that. It's never too late to do something amazing. It's never too late to be a hero. It's a lot of trust. I feel like Thorkel is... He's, he's not the, ta the type to take political sides. He sides with people he respects. Funny that they feel like such allies now, after everything that happened. That whole chase. It's like they as a group represent, you know, the people most looking for heroism in the world. Even if they're falling short in many ways. They're like, weirdly, the best hope. And also the greatest dangers. <laughs> I mean, he's been doing such a great job without it. Always living on the edge, but always finding a way. What's he gonna do? He came up with something. Like I said in Asgard, we trust. Never count the guy out. God, that was such a good episode in so many ways. Asgard, honestly, is the gift that just keeps on giving. There's no end to him. <laughs> like, the more I watch, the more I love him, the more complex he gets. I think I said it before, but I'll say it again. He's like one of the worst characters I've ever rooted for, if you know what I mean. There's so many things to respect about him. I want him to pull through, and what I want most of all, you know, I think the best outcome would be for him to pull through in a way that actually allows him to, to become realized across the categories of things he's given up on. You know, like he's sort of given up on, on anything heroic and sees himself as unworthy. The best, most satisfying narrative arc for him would be to undo that and actually meet his own image, meet his own ideal. So that's amazing and you have this political intrigue that's just so fun and I'm, I'm so glad the king also is respectable and is a formidable force to be reckoned with. Then just as like a bonus, you get that incredible interaction between Thorfinn and Leif giving me exactly what I needed. And I, I really love the, the running theme of, of Vinland as a thing. It's really obvious, you know, you think about it for five seconds. If you think about Vinland as a land or a country or whatever, it's going to be no different there. You know, they're going to get there. There's still going to be violence. There's still going to be war. They're likely going to be slaves, right? It's not just like you move somewhere else and suddenly by virtue of the land and its borders, things are different. It'll be sort of as good as you make it or as good as the people that inhabit it make it. And just humanity being humanity, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a fight and there's going to be evil. Nevertheless, everything Leif said is great and beautiful because it represents not the place, but the decision, you know, the decision to have hope, to keep battling against the sea. The decision to be free and to be great. I think those two things are, are connected in the show. There's this idea of who is really free, right? That's been introduced a bunch of times with, you know, the, the king is a slave to the crown. There was that Danish no nobleman, nobility, that wanted to inflict harm upon his servants in order to feel like he was a king, when really he was just as trapped as everyone else. Every man is a slave to something, that whole thing. And then you have the views of morality, where Thor is sort of the ultimate so far, but also in his way was the most free and also was the most against captivity of, of any kind, you know? ideological captivity, physical captivity. And so I'm getting the sense that the idea they're all dancing around and, and trying to go forward and strive for is something like freedom through character. For Thorfinn, it would be something like putting down his, his desire for revenge, you know, actually interpreting Thor's message in a way that's meaningful and deeply understood where there are no enemies and he can be a warrior without fighting and he doesn't need Asgard's death. And instead he can, you know, just live a great life as a good person in a manner he sees fit, you know, not encumbered by his emotions, his hatred, his rage. Leif really laid down a huge gauntlet and also connected the struggle something meaningful you know even if you can't see it yet even if you don't have it in your sights even if it feels really far off that's your struggle that's the way you live as a warrior by by rising and, and fighting the ocean or understanding that the ocean exists and still moving through it every day you know putting one foot in front of the other on the on the ice when you're stranded something really beautiful has taken shape in this show i'm sad there's only one episode left but one of the most expert things about it is like i said earlier it's dawning on me 
that this crew assembling is not accidental. They all have something very big in common, and I'm not exactly sure how to put that into words, but it's something like they are all the ones that have a vision. You know, they're the people who have a vision of how dark the world is and how much a hero is required, yet none of them have alone been able to do that by themselves, or at least doing it without avoiding some real tragedy. But there's hope, you know, there's hope for all of them. I've been, you know, somewhat cynical about Knut and Asklad, and Asklad sort of has already tread a very dark path. Nevertheless, there's hope for all of them. There's a chance for all of them to become truly heroic in, in the way they they wish to see in the world. And it's sort of just like, who's it going to be? And what combination will it be? Who's going to fall into the their own darkness and have that destroy them? Which of them, or how many of them will actually make it to Vinland?